Hi, how are you? This is Dr. Damaris Maria Grossman, Integrative Family Nurse Practitioner on Mindfully Integrative Podcast and YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us today on this episode. And we have an amazing guest. Her name is Lori Logman, and she is a leader in the nursing field in the bedside in neuro and cardiac. In addition, she is also a holistic nurse and wellness coach, and she can tell you more about herself, but she definitely lives mindfully each and every day. And Lori, um, it's Lori, correct? Yeah, I said that correct. All right. Awesome. And, um, tell us more about yourself and nice to meet you first. How are you? Oh, I'm doing so well. And it's nice to meet you. And I am so excited to be here because living a mindful life is what I say that I am a work in progress. So yes. mindfully, I'm taking those steps every day. I learn more and more about mindfulness and I incorporate it in my life with my family and in my work. And it's such a great blend all around that it's, uh, I'm truly blessed to have connected with it and keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. <laughs> so um, first, you know, let's go into generally what do people not know about you? Like as a, you know, you're into integrative health and mindfulness, but, um, kind of what, you know, what is something in your life that, you know, people may not know that maybe have brought you to where you are or just, just a little fun fact. Oh, well, interesting that people would not know that I was in the army reserves in my early years at the first six years that I was an army reservist Mil military. I was also military. So you were in, uh, Thank you for your service. And I, I commend you too. I know as a woman, a veteran myself, it's, it's a lot. It was a lot. And I actually was one of the lucky ones down in Fort uh, Jackson, South Carolina to train with the men. So at that time they had just integrated that the men and women would train together. Oh my. At that time, the men were going to not let a woman be them. And at that time, the woman were, I'm not going to let these men beat me. So I think I came out of that as that GI Jane. I can really? do it all. Yes. Super it really, tough. You're tough then, right? Right. It really motivated me. And at that same time, my friend went to, and I'm not saying anything bad about Fort McCullen, but she had a different experience because she trained with just the females. So when okay. we met up in Fort Sam Houston, Texas, I felt that I was GI Jane and she was a little <laughs> bit about private Benjamin. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Um, I, I definitely can imagine, uh, the training. I mean, at that, by the time I was in, I, we were integrated. So I can only imagine, like you kind of were a, a pioneer in the way of like kind of getting transitioning, um, you know, being the voice for women in the military too. You know, it's tough. It's did you, what kind of job did you have? So at that time I was uh, 91 Charlie. And so that it was, you know, the, um, I believe if I'm correct, that was the medical assistant. Oh, so you were in the medical field and then you transitioned into nursing after that? Yeah. So that really probably was my start with nursing. I was always growing up and my mother was a nurse and she told us great stories about working as a nurse. But unfortunately I said, oh, I'll never do that. There's so much blood and guts. I could never do that. Right. I didn't want to be a nurse. And somehow I did find myself in the military as a medic. And yeah. then I really found out how important it was and to make those connections with people and how you made a difference. And I think from there on, I was sold. I went on through the army, paid for my training, and I trained with the army to become an LPN. And then I was an LPN for a long time after I got out of the army. And then I moved on to get my RN. But what really inspired me to get my RN is I wanted to become a holistic nurse and to become mm -hmm. a holistic nurse, you needed to be an RN. And what made you kind of like transition to that holistic nurse thing? Cause that doesn't usually come up for someone regularly. Like for me, it did came up a little earlier, but it was a traumatic event that transitioned my pain, you know? So what, what transitioned you to go? I want to be a holistic nurse. I was lucky enough in my early days to have, you know, four children. And sometimes those Aww, children would get help sick. Less and have ear infections and different things. And at that time I was looking into ways that I could help my children and I stumbled upon herbs and vitamins. And then I stumbled upon reflexology and I stumbled upon healing touch and all these great modalities that I was using with my family. I thought, you know, how can I, you know, do this as a nurse? Yeah. So that's what I really thought that a holistic nurse was somebody who would 
use all these modalities. So that was really my inspiration to go on and get my RN and to seek this holistic nursing. That, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, and, and you kind of were like, I, I need to figure out a way to like make people better in a different way, in a whole, in a whole health approach. Like we talk about here. <laughs> yes. Yes. And then I had the opportunity that I also did home care and I took care of, um, you know, clients who were, uh, quadriplegics. And that Aww. is a extremely mindful moment to, to look back on that you were in that moment and to be present with that person in that time, because that's such an important space for them. Oh, right. and the, and the, they're, they need you, like you're, you're the one person that they need. They need total care. So one yes. for you, you, it's exhausting some days. So it's like, you're centering you. And then in addition, you have to now, you have to be there for them to do almost everything. Right. Right. I, I think I love that. I had a passion for that, that I was the um, well, I guess the barber for the men, but the hairdresser, the housekeeper, the cook, Aww. the social worker, everything. So it truly was that holistic philosophy of, of being truly there with the patient, yeah. the client. And I thought that's what took me from thinking that I could hang up a shingle and, and be a holistic nurse and do something to people to really that holistic nursing was me caring for myself to be in the best place. So I could truly be present with my patients. And I think that's looking back, being present is so mindfully how I like to be with my patients. No. Know? And it, and in that it's just so important because we just like with a busy nurse schedule or nurse or work in general, we don't always do that, you know, and that's kind of, it's just, it's tough. And, and now you, I mean, you've already, you learn the tools and, and, um, how do you like, have you, um, considered like things that made you struggle or things that inspired you to like grow from this? Or was it, you know, the patients, the home care patients, was it a, or was it just, um, an event that. Oh, always loving my patients. And I learned from my patients, probably just as much as we learned from each other, developing those relationships. Yeah. My struggles probably was being a nurse as a nurse, you sometimes lose patients and you provide that awesome care to families and patients who are at end of life. For me, though, when my sister was sick, it was so challenging because the holistic nurse, the healthcare part of me wanted to help her to get better, but the other side of me could see we're not going down that road. So how do you keep promoting, get better, you're going to get through this, as well as preparing for what's coming? I think like so. more on a palliative hospice or just looking at it as a um, healing, like, or trying to keep her like... Um, what's the word I, I'm going to say palliative, but, you know, keep her, um, healthy and happy till the end of life, or was this an end of life? Did she pass? Right, right. That's what it was. And oh it was gosh. I'm so sorry for her loss. because you wanted to keep fighting for her to get better, but you really knew that it was going a different direction. And mm -hmm. could we move into that space? And we did move into that space. One thing she said, I, I think it's beautiful as my mother and I, we were all very close. And she said, I, I don't know how to do this. I've never done this. Mm -hmm. Like none Aww. of us have. And, and we were able to go through it together. And, and you know, she, she did very well. And of course we miss her. But for me, those are the struggles of losing those people so close to me. So close. I'm so sorry. I mean, especially this year. Was it recent? Did oh, no, happen? it's been a while. But okay, but you still, <laughs> but, but she means a lot to you. I mean, any loss, no matter if it was recent or years ago, it, you know, you don't, it doesn't just go away. And, and you've been able to use your, not just your holistic training, but the way that you are all whole, whole or well-rounded, you've been able to kind of center, whether it's your faith too. I don't know if you're, you know, you've just been able to kind of center yourself to get through the day or, and get through the, those moments. I, I can only imagine how hard it is. And and then can those times be, um, would you say the struggles have made you better? Oh, I, I love learning, whether it's from good things that happen to me or bad choices, just always learning. Yes. Yeah. So in reference to um, like, is there anyone in your career or in life that has inspired you to do more with either with your patients or when you were doing your trainings, like what kind of, um, like who has inspired you throughout your career and, and life? Oh, it may be cliche, but it is that Florence Nightingale. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. Oh, that's, that's a good one. <laughs> and right. 
just her Florence being the pioneer and that she had said 200 years ago that the nurses of today would be the change makers. And her vision, her philosophy, and her belief in the nursing profession is, you know, fabulous. And I've taken a nurses week that I dress up as Florence and Do you? visit. Yes, oh, I love so to cool. dress up as Florence and visit the nursing units. I before COVID and I would share information on self-care, mindfulness, and tools to help nurses with their self-care. Oh, that's so great. Are you um implementing a lot of your techniques with your patients too in the at work? Yes, I love to be, you know, mindful at my job, our floor, we we're the love floor on my unit, three south. All our colleagues, we love each other, we support each other so much. And those are those mindful moments that we talk about mindful hand washing that you just, you know, just taking that, you know, 60 seconds to wash your hands, ground your feet and, you know, wash your hands. That Those are mindful moments. And we talk about being present with our patients that if you go in that room, we do do bedside report, but we also share, you know, that's your time to make eye contact and just truly be present and listen to your patients. I think, you know, those are, easy ways that we just bring in that mindfulness. And I do try to do that. One time I was with a patient and I came in and I slowly moved in and I was truly present. And he said to me, oh, you're really busy today out there, aren't you? And I said, well, I'm right here with you now. And everything's smooth. He said, oh, but you're busy. I see you running back and forth. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, and he, he was aware, knew. but you were there for him. And was it more challenging? I mean, this wasn't something I was going to ask, but was it more challenging, of course, because of COVID this year with um, trying to kind of keep that, you know, um, cool or that centeredness within yourself and for your patients? Or did you find because you've had the training and the time that it was, the, it was even more important? I think it's always important, even more important, I think, was the connections with the colleagues. Connections, oh, wonderful. Because as things were escalating and frustrations on the unit, we could bring it back to say, okay, let's chill. What's working? Yeah. How can we help each other? How can we just be in this moment? And to me, those are mindful moments that we can pause and say, okay, what's working? We got this. Do you need anything? And I think if our unit didn't have that mindful philosophy, that we probably would be more, we'd be more upset in the chaos that we have sometimes. Yeah. I, I, I can only imagine, especially this year, you know, it's been, it was a, a struggle for most individuals and kind of where they were at. And, um, did you go to a specific training um, or did you, like, were you in a specific training that got you to where you're at or did you kind of learn on your own through faith and, and just reading? A little bit of both. So I was introduced to mindfulness. I'm as a holistic nurse, I've had so many opportunities to go to the conferences, which I love. Oh, so great. I have taken several sessions on mindfulness for, you know, creating that as a self-care for myself. Yeah, well, not just mindfulness, but integrative health and the holistic training. You went to a lot of different trainings for that. Yeah. And oh, yes, and yes. So what's yes, your favorite yes. modality? Let's say, how about that? You know, I would, I would put my mindfulness at the top because that helps me in all my relationships everywhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's tricky. I love my homeopathy. Oh, homeopathy. Yeah, I do like lot. homeopathy too. I love healing touch because that's something that I can also offer. Mm -hmm. Those are great things. And, you know, reflexology is wonderful. If you get, you know, my kids in the chair and I start working on their feet when they were 15 and 16, the stories that they would tell was a little much, <laughs> you know, they would that's get a little nice. relaxed and, you know, that's cool. Um, yeah. I, I just, I love the different modalities and it's like, like you were saying, it's not just the modalities, but it's kind of neat. Everybody has different ones that they use. And I just was wondering, you know, what was something that you kind of were drawn to? Um, and then overall, like, do you find that in, um, you've been mindful, like mindful ways on every day or, um, like what kind of, um, would be your teaching moment for someone today to, um, help them if they were, haven't necessarily found a way to be centered. What is your, um, take home for our audience today? Uh, I think it's challenging when someone would be even myself upset or my children or my patients. And oftentimes people would say, oh, just relax, just breathe. Mm -hmm. And that right away seems to send you the other way. Mm -hmm. Do so you I have um, a tip? I think it's just being quiet. Mm -hmm. like just, 
um, take a, just a minute to feel yourself breathe and to maybe close your eyes and disconnect from all that external stuff. Sometimes that's all it takes is that. And I also, you know, for me, I have to tell myself, okay, it's okay right now. You're okay right now. Everything's okay right now. And someone once shared with me his watch and he showed me and it said now that everything's okay now. So yeah. I thought, you know. That makes sense. You know, you're okay now. You know, this is the moment right now is where you have to be. And that's, how, it's not the before, it's not the after, it's the now. That makes sense. <laughs> I love right. it. Yeah. So the, the, right, um, the chaos at work, just be here now. We got this chaos mm -hmm. at home. We're okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have um, anything that is upcoming or that you'd like to share um, in your business or work that um, you'd like to tell the audience how they can definitely be reaching you in uh, the social links that I'll have, but is there more that you like to, um, do you have a business now or um, that you add to this or a way that we can reach you? Sure. Right now I'm doing individual coaching and that's, you can reach me through my email. Okay. And as the chapter leader of the Western New York Holistic Nurses Association, actually next Thursday, I believe the title is replenish yourself before, during, and after your shift. And that will be on my website. And then oh, wonderful. Oh, and um, we'll have your website links on our show notes. I don't know. Um, what is your website so that we, um, everyone can go to just for um, if they are not able to see it right away, what's your website that they can go to? Sure. It's a H N a W N Y chapter. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's the wrong one. Sorry. About oh, that. no, that's okay. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll have them. Oh, in the I can have it in the links. If you, if you just looked up holistic nursing and Western New York, it'll show oh. up. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I would love for them to check you out and check out the that event if it's available. So um, thank you so much. And um, I appreciate you being on the show today. Is there um, anything addition that you'd like to share with uh, our audience and our um, listeners? Oh, I, th I just think it's great that you're taking this opportunity to create this podcast to share little tips because I think that's all about learning many moments of how we can care for ourselves in this busy world. Sometimes it's a calm world, sometimes it's chaotic. It's always beautiful, but sometimes we can't always see it. So I think what you're doing is helping us to all remember how beautiful it is with mindful moments. Thank you. And I really appreciate you being on the, um, the podcast and the YouTube channel, Lori. So um, with that guys, um, I appreciate you being here on mindfully integrative podcast, and I hope that each and every day you guys find a mindful way to be in the moment. Thanks so much for joining us and thank you for listening. Thanks so much, Lori, and have a wonderful day guys. Bye-bye. Thanks.